Sure. Hi, everyone out there. We're working on uh, getting our meeting going here for our Ask the Experts this Wednesday. And we still have some of our speakers that are still tuning in. So we'll get them all up to speed here pretty soon. So once again, welcome to Ask the Experts, Public School Exit. Boy, these are some exciting times, aren't they? Thank you all for joining us. And let's make sure, I have Duke Pesta, but I don't have your video. So, and Alex, we're good. Max Lyons, we're still working on. Hi, everyone. And Ray, we have. Ray, you good? Okay. All right. Well, for the most part, we're good to go. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer. So, Ray, would you go ahead and open us in prayer? All right. Let's see. Am I muted? No. Okay. Father God, we are thanking you today for your love and mercy and grace in our lives and revealing your son, Jesus Christ, to us through the power of the gospel that we could experience forgiveness and eternal life. Not only that, Lord, we have joy and purpose and direction and meaning in the life that we're living right now for your kingdom. We thank you for public school exit and how you brought this in, into being. We thank you for one the One Room Schoolhouse Ministry. We'll be looking at that today. Now, bless all of our guests and uh, participants. We pray they would get the message and encouragement they need to go forward into a commitment to K-12 Christian education and homeschooling. And we'll give you the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Well, Again, we have a few little housekeeping things to go over. If you would like to share something in the chat box that's down in the right hand corner of your screen, or at least look for the little box at the bottom that says chat. If you'd like to ask a question personally and openly, there's a little raise your hand buttons and you're going to have to tool around at the bottom of your screen. It'd be nice if we could see all of you with your video. So if you can go ahead and uh, consider uh, clicking on the button at the bottom of your screen that says video, that would be amazing. We'd love to be able to see you. Uh, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go around now. We'll just uh, have all of our speakers give you a quick one minute on who they are. And we will start mm. first with Ray since you started this off. Thank you. Ray. My name is E. Ray Moore. I'm retired army chaplain, served 30 years in the army reserve and uh, much of my ministry has been in the parish or the congregation, and I've been a pioneer homeschooler and been married 50 years, got four adult children, eight grandkids, and I'm uh, enjoying myself so much now as uh, we're watching all these things unfold in quick time, public school exit, and so many ministries where millions of people now are looking into this agenda that we're not looking into it even a year ago. Thank you for being here. Okay, I'm done. Hey, Ray, sorry about that. I'm kind of a one arm paper hanger in the office today because I got sick. I had everybody go home. So I'm also trying to manage uh, phone calls without <laughs> the same time. You know how it goes when your ministry works. Thank you, Ray. I heard nothing that you said, but I know it was good. <laughs> All right, let's go to Alex. Hey, guys. Uh, Alex Newman here, Executive Director of Public School Exit. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you. I thank uh, each and every one of you for spending a little bit of time with us. I hope this, uh, this talk will be a blessing for you. Uh, Dr. Duke Pesta, who's also with us, um, he runs the Freedom Project Academy, which is an amazing online private school that I teach for. Uh, he, Dr. Duke and I together wrote an article uh, for the updated second edition of the Rescuing Our Children report on how to find a good public or a good private school and how to avoid the bad ones. And so um, we're both going to share a little bit of insight into that. We did a lot of research for that. I traveled the country and toured a lot of private schools, uh, learned a tremendous amount. And so uh, I hope I'll be able to share a little bit of that with you. And I hope it'll be a blessing to you uh, if you're looking to choose a private school or even thinking about uh, finding a good private school for your children. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll hand it back to Dren. Thank you so much, Alex. All right, let's go to Duke Pesta.
Duke, where are you? Did we lose Duke? Are you muted? He was on. He was. I but saw now, him. Where did he go? Well, isn't that special? You know, don't you love technology? I love actually the ability to be able to connect with everybody this way. And I know on our Facebook post, we're getting hundreds and hundreds of people joining in. So our little meeting here is resonating all across the nation, but it has its technical difficulties. So, well, Duke, I'm sure you're out there somewhere. You must be muted. I've unmuted this, asked to unmute. Who's come in with my name? Who's not spoken up? That's probably Duke or Max, so. Well, Max, are you here? Max. Max and Duke, Max and Duke. All righty, well, how about Diane Davis? I'm Dr. Diane Davis. I'm with Alathea Christian College, and we are beginning the one room school movement or re restoring it to the nation because it was at one time over 200,000 one room schools, which is unbelievable. And it's an excellent way to be able to uh, school more children than just your own. So if you're into homeschooling and you have some friends who would like to um, join with you, join us and we have a webinar coming up and I have some exciting news from HSLDA and other, other free things on that webinar. Awesome, thank you so much, Dr. Diane. Okay, I also see Pastor Amato here. Pastor Amato, do you wanna just check in and say hello? I'm gonna go ahead and mute you just so you know that I've got my eyes on you. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, thank, you, thank you for uh, letting me be part. And uh, we are so thrilled for uh, this meeting and for the meeting of the minds really to help um, get our children back to a place of Christ-centered education. And uh, we've got to stand up. I, I agree with everything that's been said in previous meetings. We've got to continue to stand up. And now is the time to strike. And there are a lot of people that really have not been following godly education that are now seeking it out because they see everything that's unraveling right before our eyes. And if we stay idle, uh, we will have the blood on our hands. And so I'm just thankful for this opportunity. And I'm, I'm going to be gleaning and learning because we're, my wife and I are going to jump right in into um, much more for our kids so that they're not lost. And so I appreciate everyone on this call and you too, Dran, for making this possible. Well, I appreciate it too. And uh, he's with the United Pentecostal Churches and they do have Christian schools and their schools are listed on our website as well. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the very first question. And the subject today is picking a Christian school and beware of fake Christian schools. I mean, who, who would have ever thought if you put the title Christian on it that you have to worry about their curriculum, you have to worry about their doctrine. I mean, it's just amazing to me, but we want our children to get the best possible education that we can. And so we have some incredible speakers here who've made this their life study on, on this subject exactly. Now, I do have the first one up with Duke Pesta, how to look for a good private school. Duke, are you there? Duke. Well, all right. Well, Alex, I know you work for Duke Pesta, so I think you can tackle that one. So Alex Newman, the question is how, how to look for a, a good private school. Uh, very good. Well, thank you, Dran. Um, I don't work for Duke Pesta, but I do teach um, at a school that he runs as a contractor. And uh, we work on a lot of projects together. And we also um, worked on this very closely along with Ray Moore and Israel Wayne and some others. And um, we actually went back to press with this and we did a, a second edition called uh, Rescuing Our Children, the special report, uh, second edition. And uh, we included an article in here. I actually shared the link in the chat. And so I just want to share a little bit of the insight on that. 
you know, as we uh, investigated this, and Ray is very familiar with this as well, what we found was that there are many, many Christian schools that are, uh, you know, what I call uh, Chinos, right? Just like we have rhinos in the Republican Party, uh, Republicans who are Republicans in name only. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of Chino schools, uh, schools that are Christian in name only. And um, some of the really obvious warning signs, right? Uh, are they using school textbooks from the public school, right? Are they using the stuff that the public schools threw away a few years ago? Uh, if they are, that should be a, a giant red flag, no pun intended. Um, you know, a, a decent Christian school will not use secular anti-God materials. Uh, you know, the Bible is very clear. Uh, Jesus said that you're yeah, either with me or you're against me. me. And, um, you know, the, the materials that are being used in the public schools are not with God and therefore they are against God. Uh, and if you have those being used in a Christian school, that's your first warning sign. You want to stay uh, far away from that school. Why would you waste your money giving your children, uh, you know, maybe they'll have a prayer at the beginning of the day and maybe a Bible class. But the rest of the day is going to be uh, very similar to what goes on in public schools. That's completely unacceptable. Um, another warning sign is the way they teach uh, reading. OK, and, and this applies even to non-Christian schools. That's one of the first questions you want to ask a private school is how do you teach reading? If they say we use Common Core, if they say we use, you know, pick your sight list, the fry list, the dolce, it doesn't matter if they're using sight words, if they're training your children to memorize entire words as if the words were uh, symbols rather than collection of symbols, each one representing a sound, uh, that is a, a big problem. That probably means that a lot of their uh, administrators and teachers were trained in secular universities, uh, in, in you know Marxist colleges of education. So you want to avoid that. Uh, if they're not using actual phonics, and I mean legitimate phonics, because nowadays you, you, people have started figuring this out. So now you even have sight word publishers packaging their garbage, their mental poison uh, as phonics. So if they're not using legitimate phonics, uh, that's another thing to be aware of. Now, uh, while I was touring the country, I actually wrote about uh, two schools that I was blessed to uh, to to go through, uh, speak in some of them. I've spoken a lot of private schools while I was on my uh, summer tour last year uh, on rescuing our children. And uh, there was two that really, really stuck out to me. And uh, Diane uh, is going to elaborate a little bit on, on the curriculum choices and the philosophy they use. But I'll just you know give a brief introduction. Um, they use something called the principal approach. Uh, so one of our friends who's uh, on our advisory board, his name is Dan Smithwick. He runs something called the uh, Nehemiah Institute. Uh, wonderful, wonderful ministry. And he has developed what he calls the peers test. It's a worldview test. Uh, and what it does is it asks questions um, about your worldview to determine how well the worldview of the individual lines up with what God teaches in the Bible. And um He's been doing these tests for decades now, uh, and he's been testing children coming out of, you know, regular old Christian schools. He's been testing homeschoolers, and he's been testing children who go through schools or programs where the principal approach is used. And what he has found is that principal approach students score far higher on the biblical worldview test than students in any other uh, category, any other class of education. Uh, and as I toured these schools, I went to two of them. Uh, one of them is uh, Stonebridge School in Virginia. Uh, the other is the Christian Heritage Academy just outside Oklahoma City. Uh, I was absolutely blown away. My wife toured with me. Um, it was incredible. I mean, the, the kids were well behaved. They were smiley. I got to look through their notebooks. And, and I mean, the oh, there, there you go. Thank you, Dran, or whoever put that up. Uh, you can see there the, uh, the green line is the children who went through the principal approach schools. Uh, the purple line is homeschoolers. So homeschoolers do, you know, pretty well. Um, the yellow line there, talk about depressing. That's uh, traditional Christian schools where some of them are going to be using government school textbooks. The principal might have been trained in a state university, uh, might have been a public school teacher before moving over to the Christian school. Maybe they're taking the rejects from the public school, you know, the kids that got uh, expelled from school, uh, and they're in there influencing children in a negative direction. And so what you can see there is um, they don't even have a biblical worldview anymore, right? Uh, at this point in our history, they are now firmly in the secular category. And that should be alarming, right? Parents think they're sending their children to a Christian school to get a good education and to come out thinking biblically, and yet they're coming out thinking just exactly like the world thinks. So uh, the principal approach is a phenomenal uh, approach to education. Diane Davis will give us a little bit more of the Foundation for American Christian Education. Uh, two of their leaders are on our advisory board. Uh, I was able to go visit them um, recently in Virginia. Amazing things going on there. And so, you know, you really want to know how are these schools teaching? 
Um, you know, look at the curricula, look at the materials, look at the teachers, look at the principal. Uh, and, and, you know, I tell this to people all the time. You would not trust just some random stranger who showed up at your house to, to come in and talk to your children. Right. And, and yet the school is far more important. Your kids are going to spend, um, you know, seven hours a day there, five days a week for potentially many years. You've got to do your due diligence. Um, and I'll leave it at that for now. I'm sure we'll have uh, much more to say, but I'll hand it back to Dran and she can pass it on. Well, thank you so much for that, Alex. Do we have any of our uh, uh, other speakers on this subject that would like to weigh in with what Alex has spoken about? Just go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, Ray, if that's you talking. You yeah, I am yourself. trying to. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Um, we, we talked uh, yesterday on our board about what makes it, what constitutes a Christian school. And Alex has really already addressed a, a major component, um, but there also should be a creed, confession, or doctrinal statement. You know, Christians are a people of, of the book, but they're also people of confessions. We produce confessions and creeds down through the centuries. So I think we have a statement of belief, and the members, the teachers, have to sign it every year, renew it. Then we want a regenerated or Christian faculty and administration. And that means they have to have a real living faith, having been born again. Now, uh, Alex uh, mentioned a, a problem. Some of the teachers, and, and we have a long 30-year history with a very fine private Christian school, which will remain unnamed because I need to make a few comments about things that were inadequate. But they, a lot of the faculty for these <clears throat> evangelical colleges are come out of state universities. Many times they've been saved through the outreach of crew or some other Christian group, and they've had a real conversion, but their minds haven't really been changed too much. They still have a secular way of thinking. And so that's got to be addressed. And then the biggest thing that we came up against where my wife taught for 10 years was a, a not a consistent Christian curriculum Part of the reason for this, I'm not justifying it or defending it, but I want you to understand how people think. A lot of the kids from Christian schools do go into state or secular universities. And I think, frankly, that's something that's got to be rethought re, re, uh, as well in the future because the, the uh, egregious nature of state universities is, is becoming more horrible by the minute and the brainwashing is incredible to our Christian kids. But these children are in a Christian school and the faculty says, well, they've got to have some secular programs or they won't be able to make it up on the campus when they go to the Christian school. And that's one defense of not having a consistent curriculum that's Christian. We don't subscribe to that. And my wife had to battle it in the school that she was in and uh, complained about it. it. It wasn't total. There were some Christian textbooks that we use and some weren't. The other reason that people <clears throat> Christian schools have justified not having a Christian curriculum, thorough Christian curriculum, is that if you go back 20 years, there wasn't a lot of good Christian curriculum. And this is something that's been developed in the last 10, 20, even 25 years. And so if you had textbooks, you had to use secular textbooks in many cases. That's no longer the case, my friends the Christian curriculum world is really exploded. Uh, we have apologia in the area of science, which is very good, very creationist oriented. Their PhDs who are real scientists have authored these books. So there's no reason not to have a Christian curricula uh, in your school. So those are just a few things uh, that have been, that Alex sort of touched on. And then one more issue is that there's an encroachment of leftist ideas that are coming into some of our Christian schools, like the social justice movement, Common Core. And sometimes the faculty and staff are not prepared to deal with these and they capitulate without realizing that they have capitulated to a alien ideal. So worldview instruction is very important to maintain the standing of a Christian school. Okay, that's all I have for right now. Ray, I put up on the screen the 
curriculum apologia and it's a wonderful they have middle to high school if you're looking at my screen elementary mm -hmm. science we personally know a number of the people involved with this so unless they've had a turn <laughs> in a bad direction the last year or two i can still recommend them i'm sure they're doing just fine well thank you so much for that and i I understand that Duke Pesta is, is here with us. Duke, are you able to connect? Can you hear me? Yes, wonderful. Oh, good. Sorry about it. I have uh, major technical issues, but I think we got it fixed. But uh, I'm sorry I'm late. OK, well, Duke, you had a part of your discussion, and Alex pinch it for you. But there's we always uh, uh, appreciate your, your, your offerings. How do you look for a good private school and what are some of the warning signs? Well, one thing I would do, and I learned this from being a university professor, you know how these uh, moms and dads bring their kids to university and then a couple of students show them around all the buildings and walk them across campus. Those kids, those students have been hired by the university to sell the university. The single best thing you can do is talk to other parents or other students in that school. The administration, if they're godly people, they're gonna tell you the truth, but they may not even know the truth of their own school. I recommend that if you can co contract the, contact the administrator, administrators of the school and say, hey, I'd like to talk to a couple of your parents to get testimonials. And when you talk to those parents, talk to the kids and just ask those hard questions. Is it really a Christian community? Uh, do you as Christian parents who put your kids in the school, do you have any regrets? Have you encountered any problems? The families will be more uh, scrupulously honest about that. And that's the best way to figure it out. If, they're, if real Christian moms and dads and kids are having a real Christian experience, they'll tell you. And if they're not, they'll tell you as well. I think that's about as good as anything. Very good. That's a great idea. Okay. I, so I'd like to, Duran, let me just hop in here real quick. Um, sure. Duke, if you could talk a little bit about uh, Freedom Project Academy. Um, you know, I, I know, especially with coronavirus, a lot of people are worried about uh, you know, going back to a physical school, uh, you know, I think especially when it comes to children, I think those fears are, are really overblown by the media, although I'm not a doctor. But uh, could you tell us a little bit about what makes Freedom Project unique? I mean, one of the things I find most amazing is how you guys went through everything to make sure there was no tie to Common Core. So maybe talk about, uh, you know, how how schools can prevent uh, this, this, uh, you know, dumbing down and indoctrination from seeping in. Talk about the book list, that kind of stuff. I think that would be really instructive for people, uh, not necessarily an advertisement for Freedom Project, although that may be a, a great fit for a lot of people. But I think there's a lot that people can learn about private schools themselves from uh, the experience of Freedom Project Academy, not taking any money from government, all these great things. Yeah, it starts with that. Don't the minute you take a, a penny from state, city, or local go or federal government, it's over. They're going to tell you what you can and can't do. You know, I keep hearing we keep hearing how broke the schools are, right? How broke all these public schools are. We're a private Christian school. We take no money from the government, and yet every week, once a week, I get a letter from the state of Wisconsin begging me to take hundreds of thousands of dollars of grants for my school. Now that's not being done out of the virtue of their own heart. They're not just trying to give me money. They know that the minute I take money, I, I am co-opted into their testing system. We are co-opted into their curriculum demands. We have to teach their health and wellness curriculum, which is pure sex indoctrination, sexual indoctrination. So don't. So, so the first thing you got to do is make sure there are, there are not any of those conflicting ties. Um, and I did see a question before I got bumped out. I was in and out and in and out. I think Karen Brackett, who's a good friend of Freedom Project, asked a question about uh, is uh, here we have another month or so, three weeks to a month before school starts. So we are past our enrollment period at Freedom Project. But um, if, if, you, if you throw up in the chat room my email address, if you don't mind, Dran, it's pestaj, P-E-S-T-A-J, at fpeusa.org. And you want to email me directly. If you're out there watching and you, you, you think you missed the boat or you might be interested in Freedom Project, depending upon what grade your kids are in, we might be able to take them, even though we're a couple, couple weeks past the deadline. But to answer Karen Bracken's question in the chat, yes, we will still try if we can. So uh, the, don't worry. At this late date, email me, email me directly. I can call you. We can see. And to finish up Alex's question, um, what, one of the things you got to do is you got to make sure whenever possible that you are reading primary texts. I mean, one of the beautiful things about living in the internet era that we live in is there is so much good information 
that you can get your kids with a click of a button. I'm, I'm skeptical of textbooks. Why? Because textbooks are written by human beings. And so it's almost impossible for a person not to skew a textbook. You, you're, you're writing a biology textbook and you would think that that should be the most easy thing in the world, you stick to biology. But as we have seen in the public schools uh, and even in some of our Christian curriculum, we see how easy it is to let biases and attitudes and opinions start to inflect. So whenever possible, what we do at Freedom Project is we try to avoid textbooks uh, in the sense that we have them read real literature online. All, anything that's over like 100 years over is free. You, so you can read all the great classics online for free. Uh, textbooks by definition, is, is, is they're, they're putting somebody between you and the information. You know, we used to think about the Bible world. Think about, we, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of us have read Bible commentaries. That's pretty staggering, isn't it? Depending upon who wrote the, 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 uh, the Bible commentary. I mean, you pick up one Bible con commentary uh, and then you read another one and you think you're reading two, se the two separate Bibles there. So uh, whenever possible in this very computer age that we live in, you could get kids directly to the source history. You could show them history online and call up historical sites and look at uh, uh, historical facts and data, maps and battle, battle re reframings, all that stuff you can do without having the imposition of somebody who wrote that textbook. Because every textbook writer is writing for someone. So they're, if they're tailoring their message to someone. Uh, Ray is exactly right. We have some pretty good Christian uh, uh, textbooks out there, but even they can be problematic if you're not careful. So just recognize that a textbook keeps you one step removed from information that many, not always, but many times you can get more directly. I think that's an amazing piece of advice and I don't ever remember really hearing that. And for me, that's really connecting right now. So what you're saying, if I, if I could just throw this, let's just say that you're studying the civil war rather than going to any kind of a textbook, maybe you go to Pennsylvania, maybe you take a tour of where they conducted the battles, maybe you read some stories on, uh, you know, the war heroes. Yeah, and if you're, if you're not able to travel all the way to Gettysburg, you could get, call up Gettysburg on the web, You'll, they'll give you a camera, real-time camera picture where you can scan the whole grounds. You have timelines for history, right? So you, you want to study the Battle of Antietam, right? You can get a timeline online that's accurate and you walk your kids through that timeline and then you call up pictures of what a Confederate uniform looked like or what a, a, union, uh, a, union, a union, uh, union uniform would have looked at. Then you go to the Antietam Museum, online museum, and, and the online battlefield website. And you, so you can begin to piece these things together so much. And the nice thing about that, too, is it is interactive with your kids. You know, you're not giving a kid a book, having the kid open the book, read somebody's version of the Battle of Antietam. You are showing them and you're finding things along with them. It's amazing because you get to the, you go to the Antietam site and it's got all these links that you can click to and you haven't looked at them and you clicked on one of those links to, 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 to see what, what it was like to be a soldier's wife during the Civil War. And you're finding out things and they're finding out things. And when, when education is about discovery, for you and for the kids, uh, nothing beats that. Nothing in the. Think about the joy we have when we sit down and read scripture with our kids, and we get to explain to them and give them insights and examples. I mean, that's the best kind of bonding. And and again, I'm not saying that you can do this for every subject. I can't imagine how this would work for calculus, for instance. But you certainly can do that for most of the humanities and most of the, the social sciences and even some of the sciences, you know, with online experiments with your kids that aren't mediated by somebody. You've got the baking soda and the vinegar. You can show them those reactions. So in other words, part of the joy of homeschooling is the, the, the real benefit of interacting with your kid, watching his eyes open or watching her connect to the world around her. And so the less we can do to, to, be, to, to put barriers or other people's voices between that, the better. Actually, that, way, that makes me a little bit suspect of even some of the co-ops or classical hybrid programs where you're going a couple of days a week and do a you know, classical education. And then maybe then you have, they assign you the, the assignments and you take those home and you study them. So you're really working out of a textbook as well. I mean, I think that when you've got live people instead of 
anonymous authors or faceless authors, that's more original, right? I mean, it, that depends, of course, on what the curriculum is and what the worldview of the, the person doing the assigning and the conversation is. Con my experience with conver classical conversations is, like everything else, it's mostly really good. That doesn't mean that bad it, people with the wrong ideas get through, sometimes they do. But w I find that with our school, we give them the primary texts, right? And the teacher's job is to open the world of Shakespeare by contextualizing it, right? This is not one of our Shakespeare teachers saying, all right, now I was trained to be, I was trained in gender studies as a, as a young teacher. And so I'm gonna give you a gender version of Shakespeare. What we try to do is, okay, here's Hamlet. Where is Denmark? What did Elsinore Castle look like? What would a guy like Hamlet have been wearing? Uh, what did it mean when the, the, what was the, what was the conflict between the Danes and the Poles that led to all of this? What did the 16th century believe in ghosts? So we got the ghost of Hamlet's father, right? So that kind of stuff. I mean, we, we now control the narrative. Uh, it used to be a time 10 years ago when we were utterly at the whim of textbook companies and publishers who they hired, whatever spin they had, whatever the company wanted, and whatever the, the, who you hired to write that. And, and that's why we have this radical left-wing shift because there were no options. The internet is our option. And uh, so just remember that, that part of the journey of homeschooling is the freedom to avoid all of that pre-planned, pre-programmed garbage that, that moves so many of our kids the wrong way. I'm sorry. Okay, that was great. Actually, I have a lot of questions that's opened up kind of a can of worms for me that I would bet you would be important for other parents to know. One, on the Public School Exit website, we do have suggested curriculum that we believe is the top notch. So we hope that you'll all go there. But I would love to know, does it exist anywhere where there's actually a comparison of the different types of curriculum that are out there now that are being taught to our kids that we can use to help get more parents to exit public schools when they know that these have been, you know, rewritten, hijacked, uh, interpretation, you know, all of that. Do Is there a comparison out there anywhere? Do you know, Duke? Alex, do you remember, I, I, I should be prepared for this question. I haven't thought about her in a couple of years. The woman in Green Bay who has the website where she's done like 1500 curriculum comparisons, it's all free. What was her name? Do you remember, Alex? I know who you're talking about, but the name escapes me. It's been so long, but- um... I'll, I'll take a look at, if I can find that right now, I'll share it with you, but go ahead, Alex, make your point. Yeah, no, that, that's what I was gonna say. I, I don't remember the name, but we'll be able to find it. Uh, we've got a lot on um, on uh, publicschoolexit.com in terms of recommending good resources. Um, uh, I know one of the things that we do in our homeschool when we're looking for textbooks is we actually just go to Freedom Project Academy's website, fpeusa.org, and um, right there they've got a book list. And I know they've all been vetted. I know they're not tied to Common Core. I know it's good materials. Um, so, uh, so there's a lot of good places to, uh, to look for that stuff. I'm sure we'll find the name of that, uh, of that lady before this webinar is over and we can uh, put it out there. So. Okay. Well, great stuff. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Has Max Lyons been able to connect with us? Does anyone know? All right. Well, we'll have to get him on the next round. I think what we're going to do then is go to you, Diane, Dr. Diane Davis. We're going to talk about curriculum choices. And some of the things that we're just hearing about, the, well, it's already been alluded to, the curriculum is so important, but right now we understand that even in the public schools, they're now going to be teaching a whole series on Black Lives Matter. What? I mean, really, what? All This just continues to snap our minds. What kind of, this is not, this is insane, completely insane. So with that, Dr. Diane, go ahead. I have given um, you some PowerPoints, and if you could put up on the screen the okay, four- Okay, yeah, um, you know, I did look, come to think of it, you did say that, but I don't see any PowerPoints emailed to me. Is that from you personally or from Terry Barnes? From Terry Barnes. I emailed him. And Terry, you emailed me? Public school article? No, I don't have any slides. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to shoot shoot it over to me? We'll go on to a different subject and come right back to you. Okay, okay, that's fine. All right, so someone send me those slides. 
Okay, so why don't we go on to this? We'll go to a Ray right now, the struggles with Christian schools and why they and why they take up so much, you know, what are the struggles with Christian schools and why, why they're so secular? I've, I've kind of alluded to it before. And frankly, the problem is significant enough. And if it doesn't improve, it may be that homeschooling will be kind of the refuge uh, and groups like FPE will be the refuge for people who really want a thorough Christian conservative worldview curriculum. So we need to keep battling for reform in our Christian schools, because most of those people, I think, want to do the right thing. But part of it is that a lot of our children in Christian schools are going to secular universities. And so somehow the faculty in the Christian school thinks they've got to have a, a curriculum in the Christian school that will prepare them to be on the secular campus. And that's just not true. And I also mentioned uh, earlier when I spoke about the fact that years ago, it's probably decades ago now, there were not a lot of good, solid, academically uh, sound Christian curriculum. And so we feel like we had to use secular curriculum. And I've seen a Christian school use a biology textbook, which is based on evolution. And, uh, and they try to correct it. They will bring up creation, kind of inter bring it up in the class and talk about it. But every, the underlying philosophy is still based on evolution. So uh, I think families have to battle for this. And uh, because, you know, most I've kind of operated under the belief that many people will not, for some reason, be able to choose or will not choose to homeschool, which is really probably the ideal thing if they're using a good curriculum. But they might elect to put their children in a Christian school or private school and get them out of the public school, which is what we really are desperately trying to do. So I think we have to fight for re reformation in our private Christian schools, but there's a lot of pressures on them. And uh, you, when you have a, in my grandchildren's school, you have 900 children in the student body and you've got various degrees of spirituality among the families. Some are very godly and will stand strong. And then some barely know the Lord and, uh, so they put pressure on the administration of these schools. So does that answer it partially what you're asking for? Sure. For, yes, definitely. And by the way, Diane, Dr. Diane, I still do not have your PowerPoint slides. Uh, but let me go ahead. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take you on a quick tour of the SALT, excuse me, the uh, public school exit website, because I do want to show the parents out there and family members some of the questions that you can ask the future school, let's say you do want to have your child enter a public school, not a public school, a, a Christian school, you do need never a public school. I might slip up, but never. <laughs> Always a, a Christian school. You have to get your kids out of public school. Uh, but let me go here and share this screen. Uh, these are some of the questions and where you can find the information. So on the public school exit website, which here is the home page, when you scroll down here, it's going to say find a school. So when you click on find a school, it's going to tell you some of the schools that we recommend. But if you look down here, you're going to see a wonderful map of schools that we're starting to populate. Now, if you have a school out there and you wanna be listed on our website, not a problem. You're gonna go here to download the application. Now, the other day we were talking about what defines a real Christian school. And of course, Ray, uh, some suggestions were made, and this was from our team here, that one, you have to have a confession of creed and a doctrinal statement. Number two, the faculty has to all have a testimony for Jesus Christ and be able to sh share how they were saved and articulate their faith. Also, you have to have a Christian curriculum, simple as that. Um, preparing our kids to go off to secular colleges and why uh, some of these books are so secularly mixed. I mean, even if we train our children up in the way they should go and then we turn them over to an, a university, as Ray was saying, 
there's no guarantee because they're going to scrub everything out. They have become Marxist. You have to be highly careful where you send your kids for, for college. But what does this Christian school need? A biblical worldview curriculum. And that's where Alex was talking about the peers test. Uh, does the, the school offer chapel or um, some kind of a weekly or daily assembly of the saints, which is all the students and the faculty together to pray together? Um, does the school have daily prayer and daily Bible reading? And is there daily Bible instruction in the classroom? How are you going to learn if you're not studying the Bible? Uh, so there needs to be individual Bible instruction and counseling. And then um, also a school that's also selective in their attendance. We talked about this a little bit. S some of the schools, and I, my kids did go to a Christian school in their high school years, and we found out that this really does apply. Even if the school requires of you that you have pastoral letter, which we did get, two references from other people that go to that school, which we did get, we know that other Christian families got fake material similar to that because some of these their children they just wanted into christian school because they they were behavioral children they needed they needed a they thought that if they put them in a christian school that suddenly this christian school would whip them into shape because they as parents weren't able to control their own children and you have a lot of that so those are some things to be careful of but i wanted to share with you on this page download the application i highly recommend that all of you no matter what school you're going to, you download this application and ask the school to fill it out for you so that you know what they're made up of. And so some of the things is again here, they can provide a statement of their faith. They can provide their mission statement. All right. Um, how do they instill a biblical worldview in their students right here? These are the, these are the questions to ask. And then you can have them list all of the programs, resources, and methods that they use to teach. And if you need some advice, if you need some help with that school, and you're not familiar with the programming, I will bet you one of our experts and advisors has plenty of that. Are they incorporating Common Core? What is their sex ed position? These are so important. We don't want any Common Core, and we do not want them teaching our kids about the birds and the bees. That's a parent's job. Uh, certain aspects of health I, are fine, but do they take government funding? What's the history of the school? In other words, what's their background? How many students do they have there? You know, what's their student to teacher ratio right here? Do they have any scholarship programs? And that's a very good place for you to begin right there. So if you want to be listed also, please, would you mind donating at least $25 to us? We could use a lot more than that. Believe me, we could, but $25 at least covers our cost of, of an analyzing your application and then getting you posted up here with Terry Barnes on our website. So I wanted to share that with you. And I think now, Diane, you have sent me your information, hopefully, hopefully, and we can pull that up on screen. There we go. Okay. Can you still see my screen? Is it working? Yes. Open? Yes. That open here? Perfect. All right, so Diane, let's go back to you. So can you make that a little bigger or put me on slide, slideshow? There we go. Okay. This is the one room school method that I have written a dissertation about. I'm going to go very quickly through this. Go ahead. Oh, by the way, these are students at our school. To the next slide. Hold on one second. I I did a big boo boo. I hit duplicate slide, and now I see a lot of everybody. <laughs> so okay, so I will talk. Work. I will talk while you are getting me up. Right. I'm trying to get rid of these screens. Why can't I? Okay. I'm okay. Getting, if I cancel that out, is something going to happen? Oh, I'm scared. Okay. I hate when this happens. All right. So I'm minimizing you and going back to this. I don't know. I'm doing the best I can. The principal, the principal okay. approach is a two-pronged um, approach. It is a method and a biblical philosophy with biblical principles. And so it's how to teach and then biblical principles, what you are supposed to be teaching. 
as a basis for your education, for government, for classes. Some classes you'll be able to get the biblical principles in more, where other classes you're going to um, have, like in calculus, someone said, um, how do you teach calculus? Well, you can do research on the founders of calculus and all the discussions and arguments and political things that went on then would be a great uh, research project for someone who's studying calculus. So have you gotten the gotten it up, Duran? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, go ahead and just tell me when to advance the slide. Go ahead. Can you see it? No. Really? Yes. Okay, so I am so afraid to touch anything right now because what I managed to do, and I don't know how I did it, so I apologize. So I managed to hit, let me go back up to here. Oh, start screen share. Let's see. Yes. Ah, I didn't do that. All right, let's see. Yes. How am I going to do that? I'm a little nervous because what happened is I hit duplicate. I have two sets of Zooms two sets of PowerPoint, and I'm afraid if I click out of one, I'm going to lose something. Everything. I, I don't know. I, you know, I sometimes life is weird. Okay, so wait, no, no, I've got to go back to here. I really apologize. This is not my forte. I do the best I can, but let's try this and see if it works. Do you see that, Diane? Yes, yes. I do. Okay, so it is not reading, writing, and arithmetic. If you go on to the next slide, Dran, you can see everybody jokes about, well, writing doesn't start with R and arithmetic doesn't either. That is from, I did research last night, that's from the Mirror of Literature, Amusement and Instruction Reminiscences. So it's not a principal approach. Uh, the 4R method is something that has been derived from Verna Hall and Rosalie Slater as they researched the colonial method that our students studied at that time. So the next slide is about research. This is our library. In fact, I am staring at this picture right now. We have uh, multiple rooms in the library because research is what you need to do. Just like Dr. Duke Pesta said, it is important that students research primary documents, not textbooks. And so we have, we have bought, and I recommend to you that if you want to get books, go to your local library and ask if they sell books. That's what we have done. And over the years, we have probably 10,000 books that we've bought from the local library. You have to use the Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary um, to start your research so you know what you are studying. So if they're studying literature, you want them to look up literature in the dictionary and find out what are the basic thoughts about literature. Because the next step is use a concordance. If you go to a concordance which lists all the scripture references, if you get a Strong's concordance, it is um, with the, the King James Bible. And if you look up literature, you will only find two references to literature in the Bible. And there in Daniel, that um, Daniel learned the literature of the Chaldeans. And so then I was stuck. So I had to go back to the 1828 dictionary and look up more words under literature. And I continued my re biblical research. Then, as Dr. Duke Pesta said so well, use primary source material. And you can do that online. Find out if you are studying a book. Uh, we, we have used the principal approach recommended books, and then you look up the primary sources, where the author lived, where the illustrator lived, what was their purpose, and then you read the book, and you analyze it according to uh, the five elements of literature, setting, character, theme, style, and character, theme, style. And I'm drawing a blank. So use primary source material and use secondary sources cautiously. Be sure that you know that many of the um, the secondary sources are written with 
socialist agendas, even as long ago as the 1800s. So read primary sources. Okay, the next slide is about reasoning. And this is a, this is my one room school. This is, I've taught many years in a one room school. This was a smaller class and some of those are homeschoolers who are coming into my class. And you can see I have scripture written up on the board and they're writing it. It's very important. This method, you do all four, research, reason, relate, and record. Record means to write. And so you write down what you're learning in notebooks and you can see that they, the students are writing and we're reasoning about a scripture that I had written on the board. And it comes from, come now and let us reason together, Isaiah 118 and many other scriptures that talk about reasoning. Let's reason with God. Let's find out what it is about this subject. Let's do more research. So when I interviewed James Rose, who uh, I wrote this as a doctoral, no, as a master's thesis. And um, when I showed him, oh, we first we research and then we reason. He says, no, hold your hand up with your four fingers up facing you and all you see is one finger because you do all four things at the same time. You research, reason, relate and record. So they are doing that. We are reasoning, they are writing, they are um, looking, relating it to their own lives because it's a scripture. And then the next slide, this is relating. Now I related in my thesis, I examined the principal approach schools with traditional Christian schools. I compared them and it was a longitudinal study. It took place over four years and the principal approach schools went up um, 3.1 NCE scores and the traditional Christian schools, these are from grades two through um, high school. It, I didn't start with kindergarten, first and second grade because that skewed my score, scores. But so principal approach schools gain in reading, but traditional, traditional Christian schools lose in reading over a four year period. Language was principal approach because there's reasoning and you're writing all the time, you're writing essays, you're writing uh, orations, you're writing all kinds of things. The language scores over a four year period went up by 8.4 NCE. Traditional school Christian schools went up by seven tenths. Math, principal approach schools went up uh, 3.7 and traditional Christian schools went down. 2.7 NCE, and I listed the beginning topic of my um, unpublished thesis down there at the bottom. So relate the biblical principles to each student, to Christian character, to Christian self-government, and to the stewardship of God-given talents. That's by Rosalie Slater in page 88 in Teaching and Learning, which is one of the books of the principal approach. And next, record. So for young students, recording means writing, which can include art. If they draw a picture of like my, one of my teachers is on this webinar right now, Kathy Cervantes, and she has um, done Pinocchio. And I think that she uses a lot of art with that writing. And then the writing road to reading is what we teach here by Romaldo Spalding. Um, we use that technique to teach um, Spelling, and you can see the rule up there, C followed by E-I-R-Y says it's second sounds. So this is an important part of the phonics method that we use here at the, um, and we teach it at Alethea Christian School. We have a model school, one room school called Precepts Christian Academy, which I haven't talked about very much, but that's how we have built and understand how a one room school is taught. And last, I think is, I thank you. Oh, the principal approach, which is a trademark. I wish Max Lyons was on here, but he wasn't able to get through. Um, the principal approach goes from internal to external. You, you don't put external things on children like behavior modification. You actually work to change the heart. 
And when the heart changes, then the behavior changes. It's not uh, give them candy when they're good. It's let's pray together and change the heart from the whole of the parts. So right now you have seen the whole principle approach method, but I'll tell you that I teach, when I teach this in college, it takes several weeks to teach just these four R methods. And we do it in class. Learn to think governmentally. How, who is governing you? Are you being governed by your mother who says you have to do this or you won't go, get to go out and play? Or are you governing yourself? And we teach the children, you have to learn to think governmentally. And then a philosophy of education is a philosophy of government. So you have to have a philosophy that I would, would go on on the next one, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now. The biblical philosophy of education influences your philosophy of government. And then providential government, God is involved in all our lives. And I am so thankful that we can pray and we can see him working in America right now. And I am just so thankful for what God is doing through public school exit. And so many of you out there who are working hard to educate your children or to start a principal approach um, one room school. Uh, I saw Tanya Williams on there. Hello, Tanya. So thank you very much for listening. This is, I put down FACE Foundation for Christian Education please access them. Also, they have multiple amounts of curriculum available for you. So thank you. I'm done. <laughs> well, well done. Thank you for putting that presentation together. All right, we're at the top of the hour. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to give our speakers one last minute to sum up what they'd like to talk about. Ray? Ray, you're on mute. Ray, you're on mute. Oh, you're still on mute. How's that? Okay. Great. <clears throat> Thank you for being here today. And uh, if, if you're new at this, hang in here and learn. There's so much rich material. There are so many organizations and groups that have plowed the ground. And uh, we've had two programs today, uh, Freedom Project Academy and the One Room Schoolhouse. And so you can you can do it too. And we'd like to ask you to reach out to your fellow Christians who are probably homeschooling against their will right now and bring them into this program. We have a very uh, good website. Uh, Dran and her staff have worked heroically to put together a very friendly, user-friendly, functional website that's pretty thorough and pretty complete. So you're embarking on a great adventure and your children is uh, John, uh, the third John says he was the apostle that was with Jesus and the one that was not martyred. And he was speaking of his spiritual disciples, but he said, I have no greater joy than that my children walk in truth. And when you get my age and you have four adult children, they're doing well, they're successful, they're godly Christians, and you have eight grandchildren that are doing well, you know, uh, I can lay down at night and get a little tear in my eye for happiness that we did homeschooling and Christian schooling in our early years. Thanks, Ray. Let's go to Dr. Duke. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Yeah, I thought Ray gave a good summary. Um, I, I, I say that we, we uh, re underscore what he said and some of the other people said, like everything else we do, education, educating our kids is a faith walk too. Um, as long as we, we live our faith as we're teaching our kids and as long as we're modeling our faith in the books they read and we are actually exposing them to what the faith texts say, uh, we're going to be all right. I mean, in the long run, it's going to be all right. Uh, uh, just remember that our kids are all different, which means any kind of collective education uh, waters down who they are. Let them be who they are. It's okay if uh, your kid's a little bit better at reading than math or a little bit more interested in history than uh, algebra. That's okay. I mean, let them be what God made them to be. Uh, the, the, the thing about homeschooling is, is that nobody loves those kids better than you. Nobody ever will, except for God. And so you know them, you've been with them from the beginning, you know the kind of people they're growing up to be. 
uh, nurture them to become individuals, let them become individuals. So much that's wrong with our schooling models in this country over the last couple 150 years is the collectivization of education, right, which is bad for everybody. Uh, God did not make us all the same. He gave us different fingerprints and different DNA and a thousand ways that we are all different from each other. So let education uh, further individualize your child, not collectivize them. Thank you so much, Dr. Duke. Okay, Alex Newman. Uh, thank you, Dran. Thank you, Duke and Ray. And uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, you know, choosing the education for your children is one of the most important decisions you're going to make in your entire life. Uh, I mean, you know, it's hard to think of anything except, you know, your, your relationship with God that's more important than, uh, than this decision. So spend a lot of time on it. I mean, the fact that you're here on this webinar with us or you're watching us live on Facebook or whatever, that's a good start. But, um, you know, take advantage of the resources we're, we're putting out there. We've got a lot of great stuff at publicschoolexit.com. Uh, share these with other people because, you know, the decisions that your children make about the education of your grandchildren, those are some of the most important decisions they'll make. The decisions that your neighbors make about the education of their children, those are some of the most important decisions they will ever make. So we've put a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of energy into this. We hope you'll take advantage of it. Uh, again, you can uh, read the article that Duke and I did. Uh, I posted the link earlier in the chat so you can find that there. We'll post it up at publicschoolexit.com. Uh, looking for a private school, choose wisely. Um, a lot of tips in there, you know, beyond what we've gone over today uh, in terms of helping you identify a school that'll be suitable for you to trust your children with. So, uh, you know, I, I, I always quote uh, scripture when I'm talking about anything, especially having to do with education. And God tells us in uh, Proverbs 9, 10, and in Proverbs 1, 7, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of knowledge. So when you're looking for a, a good school for your children, make sure that at the foundation is fear of the Lord and respect for the Lord and respect for his word, not just, you know, hey, let's add a prayer onto a secular education. Uh, thank you once again for being here. Thank you, Dran, uh, and all the experts who are on here. And thank you to all the parents and grandparents who are with us today. Uh, God bless you all. And uh, just let us know how we can help. That's what we're here for. So thank you. Okay, what we're going to do now, uh, I wanted you to give that, but uh, uh, Dr. Diane, Ray, Dr. Duke, and Alex, if you could just stay, I'm going to go through some of the questions in the chat box. We're going to rapid fire answers, uh, and I'll answer the ones that I can, starting at the bottom. Uh, we do not have chapters of Public School Exit. We're just a website, Public School Exit, offering solutions. Is there a homeschool co-op in the Los Angeles area? The answer is yes. How do you find that? You go to publicschoolexit.com and you go to, um, I think you're going to go to homeschooling or no, you go to state. You're looking for state. Go to state legal and then look up California, which is right there on the homepage. And uh, one of those websites, and I believe it's CHIA, which stands for, uh, what does CHIA stand for? Christian Homeschool Education Association. They're California. An amazing, of California, they're amazing. So to answer that question for Philip Zahir, and thank you for being with us. And then, okay, let me see. Are you familiar? Okay, so, so to our speakers, is anyone here familiar with curriculum called My Father's World? New to me. I've heard of it. Um, I've heard of it. I don't remember if I heard good things, but that actually reminds me. Um, we had talked earlier about the homeschool reviewer, Duke. I think we were talking about Kathy Duffy, right? She's yes. good. She's good. Yeah. So Kathy Duffy, if you go to Kathy Duffy reviews.com, you'll find reviews of <clears throat> hundreds of different homeschool curriculum and programs. Check it out. It's a good resource. Uh, you can do it by subject as well. And so, uh, you know, you can look up uh, my father's world right on there. So thank you. She lives in uh, Westminster, California, I believe. Nice. Well, I will try to, I'm going to look at that Kathy Duffy. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Good resource. Let's see other questions. I love some of the comments. You can all tool through that if you want. But let's see if there's any other questions in here. Uh, Mark Levin. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here's a question. I'm a pastor. Oh, praise God, we have a pastor here on the phone. Thank you for being with us. We're excited about that. Here's here's the, uh, I'll read the whole thing. Uh, I'm a pastor of a small rural, rural church in California. Many parents are asking me what alternatives could be offered outside the public school I don't have 
the time or staff to pull together a private school? Are there any solutions that can be legally offered that would allow these students to have a normal educational experience where the COVID-19 and public school agendas are pushing? I, I was shared this link from a friend. I'm new to the group and I'm not sure if this <clears throat> is okay. So I'm going to just start real briefly and then I'll let our experts on that. But we did and will be having a special meeting strictly for pastors and what you can do. But yes, we have on our website, if you go to publicschoolexit.com, go to school options and look up church, starting a school in your church, it starts to give you the basic idea of where you can go. We highly recommend that you watch the video, but you don't need impact statements. You don't need to start a Christian school, none of that stuff. It can be a co-op. We need to work together with you. We're here in California as well. So that would be my answer to you, Jessica. Gail Levin will put our information in the chat box there. Let's talk and see how we can help each other here in California. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw that question over to which one of you would like to answer that question? Diane, Duke, go ahead, Ray. Uh, okay, uh, we have two resources right here today. Uh, Duke Pesta, Dr. Duke Pesta with the Freedom Project Academy and Dr. Diane Davis. And you said it was a small rural church. So, you know, I think if they have less than 20 children in the church, they could actually do a one room schoolhouse. And uh, I hardly recommend that approach. And then FPE is uh, one of the best uh, curric cur curricula available. So you can do it right here. We're just looking at these two uh, heads of a school uh, program right on our page. And that's Dr. Diane Davis and Dr. Duke Pesta. That's what I would recommend. Thank you for that. Um, so there you go. You might have some more work on your hands, people. <laughs> okay, so anyway, Jessica, Pastor Jessica, please um, please be in touch with us. That would be amazing. And I think, what other quick questions do we have? Um, oh, Karen Bracken mentioned a couple of things about um, Oh, there's someone here looking for a homeschool cooperative in central Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. And so to do that, again, go to publicschoolexit.com, go to the section that says states, and then start with um, the, those different legal organizations in there because they have a lot of connections in your area. But also, we maybe you could email us and we could try to see what we can do. But a lot of it is you have to look it up online. If we don't have it on our on our web page, then we don't have it. It's just a matter of getting all of that information. So Arizona, we have one of our speakers, Diane Douglas, who's not here with us. She could have helped with answering that question, but we'll keep that in mind. Do any of the speakers here have an answer for that? Okay. But look up on public school exit states, look up legal, look up all those different ones, and many of them have homeschool associations attached to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the best, best curriculum for math? Oh, I'm sorry, Diane, you had a question? If you could, um, the pastor who asked the question would probably be interested in coming to the webinar that I'm going to be doing on August 15th. Oh, God bless you, thanks for reminding us. My bad. <laughs> we have a seminar coming up August the 15th. In fact, we'll put it in there. August the 15th, it's going to be 12 o'clock Pacific time. It will be listed up on our website. It's not there yet. And Diane, Dr. Diane right here is going to give a two hour seminar on starting a one teacher, uh, multiple grades, one room, mm -hmm. one time. So you get this for free for two hours. And uh, normally it's a, you know, we can't all work for free, but we do because we want our kids out of the public schools. So anyway, stay tuned with that, but mark your calendar, August the 15th at 12 o'clock. And it'll be another Zoom meeting just like this uh, Pacific time. Thank you for reminding me, I appreciate it. And I think that's it. I think we've um, covered everything. Can I answer one thing about the math curriculum? Yes. Um, the I did the longitudinal study in my own school, uh, Liberty Christian Academy years ago. And if you start with a Becca grades one through three or kindergarten through three, and then change over to Saxon, 
you do get the best um, math studies. The problem is that now Saxon has accept Common Core. We bought a new curriculum and I'm gonna throw it out. There's, you have to get a second edition Saxon math or before you can't do the common the one now because it's all common core it's terrible to teach so that's just a heads up yeah that's a tragedy because Saxon was a standard math curriculum for homeschoolers for so many years and mm -hmm. they've gone over to the dark side and uh, oh. we really we really need some help in that area because there I don't I don't know of a good solid Christian math curriculum there's Amen, really a, it was a good one in science for as apologia so that's something to pray about okay well folks i think we've uh, conquered for one day and we'll see you this time next week on wednesday please invite your friends uh this is a good opportunity to ask questions of some great people who've spent a lifetime in this field and I thank you all for joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and end our Facebook Live. And thank you all 